Hello, everyone. Welcome to this video. My name is Pascal Defoe, and um, I'd like to talk to you about um, the uh, harvesting concept on the new Bitcoin code blockchain. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an investment advisor either. Uh, I'm just someone who's passionate about the blockchain and uh, various projects that revolve around the blockchain. Uh, this is to say that if you choose to join any of the projects that I usually talk about, you do it at your own risk. Uh, risk because there's always a risk of losing part or all of the capital that is invested. Very important you understand that. Actually, um, I always suggest three uh, golden rules. The first one is to invest only with what you can afford to lose. The second one is to start collecting back your invested capital as soon as rewards, uh, I mean, uh, withdrawals are possible on the project that you are. And third, diversify smartly. There's actually a fourth rule that I like to, remember, to remind everyone is to make sure to always remember rule one, two, and three. Now, this being said, tonight I want to talk to you about the harvesting concept on the blockchain, on the Bitcoin code blockchain. Uh, this is a new blockchain, a new uh, cryptocurrency that is set to start the mining uh, tomorrow, October 1st of 2023. Um, while it is a very interesting project based on the same fundamentals as Bitcoin, um, it is important to understand uh, what, um, how it is set up when it comes to harvesting. Because if you don't pay close attention to your miners uh, and you let them get out of control, you may end up maybe not ever be able to uh, uh, harvest because the harvesting cost will just be so high. Whereas if you do things the right way, you will be able to uh, invest a minimal amount of money and then pass that initial investment only use your um, mind Bitcoin code in order to uh, mind the uh, next ones. So, and this presentation is exactly about that. Tell you everything you need to know before you even decide to connect your miner onto the node. Very important. So, um, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And if you like what you do, what we do, please give us some thumbs up, give us some likes. Um, uh, YouTube want to see that in order to um, you know uh, grade the channel properly and allow our videos to be seen by a majority of people. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and share my screen so that we can quickly go through this presentation that I've prepared. Bitcoin code, the harvesting concept. So let's start with a disclaimer. I'm neither a financial advisor nor an investment advisor. So choose to participate at your own risk and understand that any project involves risk of losing all of the invested capital. Therefore, only invest with what you can afford to lose. And if you're already a WASP member, we are all Satoshi member under a different team, please stay with your team and upline as you risk your account getting closed if you open a new account under a different upline. Let's start with an introductory video to tell us a little bit more about the Bitcoin code blockchain. Uh, then we're going to talk about NFT miners, the miners that are available to purchase if you want to be part of this community. Then we're going to cover the cost involved, the harvesting rules, the harvesting process, uh, when you should harvest, right, the right time. Uh, how often you should harvest, what to do if the cost of harvesting become too high, and the uh, harvested BTCC, what do you do with them? And finally, the conclusion. Now let's start with this introductory video. Bitcoin's journey started with a groundbreaking idea. What if we could create a currency that operated entirely independently of governments and banks? This innovative thought gave birth to a decentralized digital currency, a currency that would later known as Bitcoin. Our product Bitcoin code is not indifferent from Bitcoin. 
it shares same core values, principles, rules as well as benefits. Bitcoin Code operates on a 100% decentralized network, meaning it is not controlled by any central authority, making it a financial enigma that operates beyond borders and without intermediaries. In a world where trust in financial institutions has often wavered but Bitcoin Code provide users with the unprecedented power of control over their own finances. Its borderless nature allows for effortless international transactions, currency conversions, and hefty fees. It's a global currency that connects people across continents. With limited supply and fixed supply cap of 21 million coins, this scarcity creates a digital version of gold, a valuable asset that people are eager to hold onto, serving as a hedge against inflation and currency devaluation. In a new era of innovation through its underlying technology, blockchain. This technology, as an open digital ledger, holds the potential to transform industries beyond finance. Smart contracts and decentralized finance, DeFi, platforms are just the beginning. The blockchain ledger that powers Bitcoin code is not only secure but also transparent. Transactions are publicly recorded, making it nearly impossible for anyone to tamper with them. Which helps in ensuring trust in the system. Bitcoin code is more than just a digital currency. It's a dream that challenges the conventional financial system, asking if we truly need banks and government-issued money for every transaction. It is an unstoppable force, through regulatory hurdles, technical challenges, and extreme price volatility, it would remain resilient refusing to be extinguished. Bitcoin's journey. All right, let's find out what are the different type of miners that you could use to mine Bitcoin code. So we start with the Xeon GT1X. Uh, it is a one kilowatt uh, miner, hash power. Um, it consumes about 0.00278 B fuel per second. So the B fuel is basically the energy that is consumed here, but it's all digital. The hash fee is 10 and you spend about 50 USDT in order to get one of these. Then we have the Xeon GT 10X. It has a hash power of 10 kilowatts and it consumes 0.0278 B fuel per second. The hash fee is 100, and you spend 500 USDT if you wanna put your hand on one of these. Then the third one that we have is the Xeon GT 100X. So the Xeon GT 100X has a hash power of 100 kilowatt. It consumes 0.278 B fuel per second has a hash fee of a thousand and you spend 5,000 USDT in order to get one of these. Now let's talk about the cost involved in this project. So the cost involved in the Xeon GT1X are as follow. We have to take into account that, we have to consider that the miner is connected 24 seven, which will be the base of our calculation. You spend 50 USDT to buy one of these. The consumption is 0 0.00278 B fuel per second, right? It's basically equivalent to electricity. And then one B fuel costs 0 0.0125 and it consumes about, uh, or when it's, connected for 24 hours, uh, you know, that is the equivalent in seconds since the price is per second, that is the equivalent of 86,400 seconds. So let's do the math now. So if this miner stays connected for 24 hours, which is equivalent to 86,400 seconds, how do you calculate how much you would need to spend in order to harvest? you're basically going to spend 
you know, you're going to multiply the time that it was connected, which in this case is 86,400 seconds. You're going to multiply it by the price of the B fuel per second, right? You multiply by the B fuel per second that it consumes, right? That this Xeon GT1X consumes. It consumes 0 0.00278 B fuel per second. And that is in 24 hours, which is equivalent of 86,400 seconds. And then you multiply it by the price and you come to a price of around $3, $3.0024 to be exact in B fuel. Now, if you have it connected only for 12 hours, you will be spending in order to harvest. If you harvest after 12 hours, you'll be spending $1.5 in B fuel. If you only have it connected for six hours, you'll be spending for this type of miner uh, 0 0.7, in other words, 75 cents of a dollar in B fuel. And if you only have it connected for one hour, it comes down to 12.5 cents in B fuel. What is 12.5 cents of a dollar in B fuel? And if you have it connected for 10 minutes, because yes, you can actually start harvesting right after 10 minutes because uh, you know, a new new blocks are created every 10 minutes. In this case, you'll be spending two cents of a dollar in B fuel. Now, let's check the cost involved with the Xeon GT 10X. So again, we have to take into account that it is connected 24 seven. Um, you pay 500 USDT to get one of these and it consumes 0 0.0278 B fuel every second. The price of the B fuel is the same, 0 0.0125. And the consumption in one day, 24 hours, is basically for 86,400 seconds. That's how many seconds we have in 24 hours. So if this is connected for 24 hours and you choose to harvest after 24 hours, you'll be spending basically this number of seconds multiplied by the consumption of this particular miner, multiplied by the price of one B fuel, and you will get to a price of $30.024 in B fuel if you choose to harvest after 24 hours. Now, you may choose to do it earlier, like after 12 hours that you've been connected to the node, and then that will cost you $15.012 in B fuel. If you choose to do it after six hours, you'll only be spending $7.5 in B fuel. If you do it right after one hour, you will be spending $1.251 in B fuel. And if you do it right after 10 minutes, you will only be spending 20 cents of a dollar in B fuel. Now, this is the biggest and the most powerful uh, miner, NFT miner on the blockchain. It is called the Xeon GT 100X. Again, 24 seven operation that we have to consider. You pay 5,000 USDT to get one. And this one is powerful. So it also consumes uh, more energy. And the energy here is 0 0.278 B fuel per second. And the price of the B fuel stays the same, 0 0.0125, no matter where you are in the world, price is always the same, unlike electricity uh, when it comes to Bitcoin mining. So consumption every day, one day, 24 hours, 86,400 seconds. Let's look at the math. So if you harvest after 24 hours, you'll be spending $300 in B fuel, to be exact, 300.24. If you harvest right after 12 hours, you'll be spending $150.12 in B fuel. If you harvest after six hours, you'll be spending $75.06 in B fuel. And if you harvest after an hour, it's gonna be like $12.51 in B fuel. And after 10 minutes, it's gonna be $2.085 paid in B fuel on the DAP, on the platform. Now, what are the harvesting rules? It is important when you get involved with something like this that you know the rules and that you know how to play the game and be successful. Let's look at the rules. Harvesting can start 10 minutes after the mining starts. 
because the first miners, those who connect right at the beginning of the mining process, will be getting 50 BTCC right after the first 10 minutes. So yes, after 10 minutes, we can start the harvesting. Miners can connect more than one miner to one node or choose to leave some miners disconnected. It is up to you. You could choose to connect all your miners and mine more BTCC or leave some disconnected for reasons that you will be alone to decide. If you wonder what could be a reason why somebody would like to leave some miners off, uh, let's say, for example, they left the miner unattended for too long and then it accumulated to, you know, it accumulated so many BTCC that now the cost of harvesting is too high and they don't have that money. So they disconnected to stop that price from going up. And then they may use a smaller miner to, you know, to mine and get the money that they need in BTCC so that they can finally get to harvest that one. That's an example. Every miner is free to harvest at any given time. Harvesting costs go up every second. As you saw, the um, the uh, the cost or the uh, the the cost on every miner is based is calculated every second. Harvesting costs are paid in B fuel, and B fuel can be acquired on the DAP by converting RAP Bitcoin or BTCC that has been previously transferred onto MetaMask. Now, <clears throat> the creator of this blockchain are saying that they're working to get even USDT and Tron that could be used for this. So harvesting costs can go through the roof if a miner is left unattended for a long period of time. For example, if you leave the smallest miner, the Xeon GT1X, for a full week unattended, you will need to come up with $21.0168 paid in B fuel in order to harvest what has been accumulated there. It doesn't matter how much is accumulated, that would be the cost for harvesting. And if you leave it for a full month, you'll have to come up with $90 paid in B fuel. That is even more than the price of the actual miner. Now, if you leave um, a Xeon GT 10X for a full week, you have to come up with $210 uh, in order to harvest. And if you leave it connected to the node mining for a full month, you will need to come up with $900.72 paid in B fuel. Now, for the biggest miner of the flow, you will have to come up with 2,101 if you leave it connected for a full week or $9,000 if you leave it connected for a full month. So as you can see, these price can go really high. So you have to make sure you stay on top of this. You can harvest from all your miners at once or individually if you own more than one miner. It would be a good practice to swap your first harvested BTCC into BFuel and use that BFuel and subsequent BTCC to continue supporting your harvesting costs as you grow your BTCC asset. Regularly attend your miner to keep your harvesting costs under control and avoid bill shock, right? So let's talk about the harvesting process. Harvesting requires B fuel. An initial B fuel purchase will require out-of-pocket cash, okay? So after you purchase a miner, you have to prepare your initial harvesting cost that will have to come from outside the system. Once you have it, you can then use it to mine and then or to harvest. And then from there on, you can use the harvested crypto to pay for the future harvesting. Get some wrapped Bitcoin from the ERC20 network. You could get it from a DEX or you could get it from a SEX, right? which is a centralized exchange such as Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, and then transfer it into your MetaMask. MetaMask is uh, Ethereum network, so you want to use the ERC-20. Bitcoin co-creator are working on using USDT and other altcoins as well. On the DAP, use the bridge to convert your wrapped Bitcoin from the Ethereum network, the ERC-20, into wrapped Bitcoin from BTC-20. There is a bridge on the DAP that will allow you to do that. 
swap your wrapped Bitcoin from BTC20 or USD or Tron into BFuel or BTC using a new app present on the DAP that is called Kadena. Then click the harvest button. As I said, you could choose to harvest everything at once or every individual miners. So you can see here on this picture, for example, that each of the miner you have on this picture have their own harvesting button. So you could click here to harvest just this one or harvest just this one, or you could also harvest all of them together. So now, when should you harvest? That's a question some people may ask. You can actually harvest anytime there is BTCC available to be harvested. After 10 minutes or one hour or 12 or 24 hour, a week, a month, three months, it's all up to you. However, it is very critical to do it at the right time to avoid bell shock. Because if you let it go for too long, you are accumulating harvesting costs that eventually may not be a reachable target for you. The goal here is to have to spend the least amount of out-of-pocket cash, right? The goal is to spend the minimum amount of cash that would help you harvest some BTCC that you would then convert into B fuel to harvest on the, in the future. This way, you spend very little amount from your own money. After some math, the sweet spot is between 8 to 12 hours. That means from the moment you connect to the node, the mining will officially start tomorrow, October 1st, 2023. From the moment you connect your miner to the node, it automatically starts mining. Give yourself 8 to 12 hours, depending on if you have more than one uh, miner, Give yourself 8 to 12 hours to do the harvesting. And then once you've done the harvesting, you could then use the BTCC that you've harvested in order to convert it to B-Fuel and pay for the future harvesting. If harvesting after 12 hours, you can, you, you can expect to spend for a 1x $1.5 in B-Fuel if harvesting um, on a 10x, you can expect to spend $15 in B fuel. And if harvesting on a 100x, expect to spend $150 in B fuel. You would then convert the mine BTCC into B fuel for future harvesting. And if you're careful enough and you do the right thing, you should not have to spend any more out of pocket cash. So how often should you harvest? Every eight to 12 hours, at least for the first three to four days. And then after that, you can go ahead and harvest every 24 hours for the rest of the week or the following two weeks. Okay, so at first, for the first three days after connecting to the node, you harvest every eight to 12 hours for the first three days. And then for the remainder of the week, you harvest every 24 hours, or you can keep harvesting every 24 hours for the following two weeks. At this point, you should have enough BTCC to take care of your future harvesting. Stay on top of your miners and do not let them get out of control. Disconnect the miners for whatever reason. If for whatever reason you cannot attempt Okay, very important because the moment you don't attend them, the harvesting costs will go higher and higher and higher by the second. So you wanna make sure you don't let them connect it to the node if you're not gonna be able to uh, harvest them. Now, what to do if the costs become too high? Disconnect the most, if not all miners from the node if they become too high. That gives you room to think and make the right decision. And if you own different level, different type of miners, only keep the one with the least expensive harvesting costs connected to the node. At least those one you can harvest and then start building up your BTCC in order to harvest the other one. If you only have one miner with harvesting costs out of reach, 
disconnect it, then get a smaller one and build up your BTCC to harvest on the miner with the bigger cost. You could borrow some money to harvest if it makes financially sense and you can come out with profits. You could sell the miner if it is possible. I'm pretty sure with the secondary market that the community will create, People will be ready to buy miners that have accumulated some BTCC at a cheaper price if it is a good deal for them. Now let's talk about the profit. What do you do with the harvested BTCC? Now, keep in mind, every day, every 10 minutes for the next four years, every 10 minutes, 50 BTCC are mined. That makes 7,200 7, BTCC daily. So right now, with the information at hand, we currently have 22,000 miners, which is a combination of miners of 1x, 10x, and 100x. We have 22,000. So that means if you divide 7,200 BTCC by 22,000 miners, it tells you that most miners, if not every miner, will end up on each of their miner with less or with a fraction of BTCC. So the DAP will show you the value of the BTCC mm -hmm. you currently hold, and you will decide to sell or not to sell. In order for the project to move to the next level and be listed on exchanges, it will need to reach a certain level of circulating supply. As a community, it is our duty to help the project move to the next level because as the project grows, we grow. So please let us exchange and sell our uh, BTCC, at least at the beginning. Chavez is planning on selling miners at discounted price, maybe 10% off, to promote and increase the circulating supply. Because at the same time, when we buy more miners, we increase our hash rate. We increase, therefore, the quantity of BTCC that we could mine in, on a daily basis. This way, we will get more BTCC in the future that we could then hold when the BTCC hits the exchanges. We can then decide whether we want to hold 50% and sell 50, or if we want to hold 70 and sell 30, or sell uh, 30 and hold 70 up to us. In conclusion, BTCC is taking up a very big challenge. The question is, will, be, will it be up to it? One thing is sure, the fundamentals are great. BTCC could follow BTC footsteps, creating a liquidity, and this is a genius idea. Creating a liquidity and having a community from day one could be a game changer. Because just think about this. BTC, like Bitcoin when it was created, had no value, had no liquidity, had no use case, and had no community. The equivalent of the electricity bills that we pay to government and private company when we mine Bitcoin would be the money that we pay for the harvesting cost. The difference here is that that money will be going into the liquidity pool in order to give a value to Bitcoin code. That is where the Bitcoin coal will get its value even before it reaches the outside market. That's why this model is genius. So um, it could definitely be a game changer, even before we get to the use cases and other people and you know the whole world start using it. So the open concept will definitely allow the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you got to be very careful with unsolicited contacts. People will reach out to you. People will try to fool you to, to take your miner away from you. So final word, good luck to all of us. This is the end of this presentation. So this is the end of this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it.
And I truly hope that you found it important and you will, you know, make sure you follow. Um, of course, I'm not a financial advisor. This is just my way of seeing things and how I'm planning to do it. Um, share this video with as many people as possible because uh, I know it's going to happen. I know many people will leave their project, leave their minors unattended. And by the time they come back to it, they get back to it a few weeks down the road, the cost of harvesting will be too high. And then I don't know who they'll be blaming at that time. Many people tend to do that when they join projects, they just let them go and then they come back six months later and hope that they can just, you know, collect cash. Doesn't work that way. And if you play that game with Bitcoin code, you will just have, you know, yourself to blame. On this note, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you liked it, please give us some likes, subscribe to our channel, leave us some comments. And if you want to reach out to me, uh, feel free to, um, you know, check the description. My contact is always in there. One last thing I would like to mention is that um, with this blockchain, we have a group that is planning to get a note. This group is planning to get a node. Right now, there's only one node. We already have 22,000 miners connected. We're going to have even more. Now, imagine if every single one of these miners has to pay like one cent per transaction, for each transaction. That's going to be very uh, lucrative. So we're thinking as a group to get a node. And we're thinking of a share of a thousand USDT. As it is being told, a node will cost 500,000 USDT. So we need 500 people or 500 people or people ready to, you know, to get a share in 500 shares of a thousand USDT so that together we can buy and hold a node. Now, if you're wondering, yeah, but who, how are we going to manage the node? The blockchain has solved all that. Smart contract. We could come up with smart contracts that would help us manage the money, right? Manage the money. The, the, the main node wallet would not belong to anybody, but it will be held, for example, in a smart contract that at the end of every day will disperse the profit, you know, into everyone's wallet. That is just an idea. So if you find the project interesting and you want to become part of a node, feel free to join. On this note, I'd like to wish you all a good night. Bye for now.